Uh, so yeah, if you have any question regarding these topics, do not hesitate to interrupt me or ask even the simplest one because the simplest one uh, is also a great uh, great questions. So today our topic that we will cover is migrating to Java twenty one. Uh, why this one? Because Java twenty one is the latest uh, long term support version, uh, and uh, why just not simply uh, Java twenty one uh, new features? Because I wanted to uh, like. Um, shows the difference between the old one uh, the old approaches and the new approaches uh, so uh, why the new one uh, obviously better but uh, why the valid and um, because there are uh, a lot of um, uh, like project projects and uh, like code a lot of uh, on the old version so uh, let's move to our agenda just yeah so uh if, so we will start with uh, introduction then we'll overview make an overview of new features and enhancements and uh, including the mostly we will mostly focus on project amber and project loom but there are also some different uh, changes and performance improvements uh, so yeah, and then conclusion and Q and A uh, session. If you haven't asked your question during the uh, our slides, so um, something different. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's start with introduction. So Java uh, twenty one was released uh, had been released in September twenty twenty three at nineteenth of September um, nineteen September. So yeah, it is. Uh, term support as you can see from the image slide it is latest for now long term support the next one will be uh, java 25 on uh, september uh, 2023 and uh, as you can see uh, there are a lot of um, different lts versions before it so yeah it is uh, definitely a good uh, point uh, to start your migration journey to uh, Java 21 as, for example, a lot of um, project used Billout and uh, GDK uh, 8, yeah, uh, it, it was great on uh, its time, but uh, now Java had many vaults and so um, we should move on with it and we also uh, should uh, like um, be in touch because also GTK 8 <laughs> support will also uh, and uh, sooner than we will realize it. Uh, and uh, let's uh, proceed with the, another slide. It is the, the, no, something with image, maybe it just need to be loaded. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, proceed with another slide. It's like some uh, um, development uh, projects uh, as i uh, mentioned so yeah we'll cover mostly amber project with like uh, that brings a lot of uh, syntactic triggers and uh, uh, a lot of clarity in our code and uh, we will also make some focus on project loom as it brings a lot of uh, different uh, magnificent features such as uh, virtual, virtual threat when, which we'll also dive in uh, and also um, there are some other projects like improvements uh, for example for uh, the garbage collectors so let's start with the overview of the new features uh, and enhancements uh, so yeah, I'll start with project Amber and some core library uh, changes mainly. So yeah, let's start with uh, Spring templates as uh, they are really simplifying our process and creating of formatting strings. So let's just move to the IDE. I created here some simple example. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's just review um, that we had before. Uh, Java 21. So the two main approaches uh, were like three, like uh, were like concatenation um, usual, but it wasn't uh, so uh, cost effective. It's just uh, more for some constants when we need to uh, add um, another uh, string and make some, for example, translation constant. Uh, the another one 
it is using a string builder or its equivalent string buffer. We are just um, <laughs> replacing these uh, pluses with the uh, append methods. And uh, the last one, uh, it is um, the string format approach, which is a little bit more like uh, cleaner in terms of code. But uh, for example, if you look at uh, this will message that we are going to like insert our uh, strings mm, as a it isn't so much clear uh, for example who say hello or yeah we can uh, like um, uh, know it from the context uh, of the message but tomorrow to add more clarity uh, the uh, spring um, string templates were introduced and um, yeah it's um, a lot uh, have has a lot of co in common with this like message uh, string because yeah just a replacement with some escaping so uh to create like message with uh, a string template we just uh, need to um replace uh, those like if we refer to back to the uh, string format those like percent sign and f with our variable names and variable names should be escaped always uh, in such manner uh, using backslash and, and uh, escaping your name uh, and yeah it uh, looks like um, more like with some if you remember some gstl uh well, a gsp manner yeah where uh, you can also do this but in this uh, uh some uh in directly in gsp so yeah now it had brought uh, to the java and uh, yeah uh, a lot of uh, uh, this uh, uh, code um, is just simply as it is uh, to use it also we need to have a, a sequence of like a string uh, processor uh, to also to add um, uh, this is a preview feature so yeah it can be changed uh, somehow or uh, uh, be remote in most pessimistic way but uh, a lot of uh, developers and me uh, i like this uh, thing so yeah uh, we need to have a string processor it is uh, like if we can compile the string template uh, it is uh, uh, the variable uh, in uh, the uh, string template uh, class and uh, yeah you know, we can uh, mm, it is most convenient way of using it, but we can create uh, string templates uh, straight from uh, the classes using uh, string template of method and uh, uh, so on. Yeah, and also don't forget to use such cool features as multi-line uh, strings to introduce a bit earlier. Yeah, so uh, that is uh, with uh, uh, string templates so yeah uh, let's move to another one uh, it is pattern matching for uh, switch uh, it has been introduced earlier in java 17 but it came out of preview in uh, java uh, 21 and uh, also it is worth noting that uh we can also like discover the another one is record patterns which extend our ways to work with records as i have example with uh, the records um, and uh, we it will just be easier to have this uh, both uh yes yeah, so let's proceed with the uh, another one uh here i created the another one uh example uh, it is like uh, some of that how they were before. So, uh, for example, we have some data visualization app that has some charts and uh, charts have ID and some of them, for example, bar charts have some multi matrix and the line charts only one matrix and by chart is going to be uh, special. It will have an additional title and uh, some of the aggregation. 
specific functions uh, to count the percentage. So uh, let's have a look how it was before Java 16. Um, yeah, when, before uh, the old ones. So we just needed to check if, uh, for example, our uh, object is instance of the another class and then we had to do some casting and after that if you for example wanted to uh, like have the output message with is it multi matrix or single matrix which are being gathered to have to uh, use uh, ifs and uh, so on so uh, yeah it was really convenient in, in this okay uh, case yeah and uh, when java 16 uh, had firstly introduced the uh, string uh, pattern matching for switch uh, it was very convenient to use this arrow style um, uh, function just to uh, have this like uh, case when it is already casted to the needed um, type. So yeah, mm, we do not need to cast it um, by our hands, by our some boil plate code. We just, uh, as Java does it only for us, uh, yes. And but um, there is some also downsides that uh, we have such if uh, and yeah it's like uh, messes up our code a bit and uh, it makes it harder to read and to be uh, clarified uh, with and so let's take a look how uh, Java twenty one uh, does this approach. Um, here we also uh, can see the a list of important features that were um, introduced in uh, Java 21. And let's go just uh, uh, one by one. Yeah. So here is uh, our record, our bar chart, and we can directly uh, decompose it to have our variables such as uh, ID and uh, matrix. So yeah, it is the fields in, uh, it is like properties in this uh, class. And so, yeah, we can just directly uh, have these properties and then uh, we get rid of those if in such manner, in one line manner. So uh, when we need some if or check some other property or uh, we just can simply use keyboard when and uh, then we are using uh, some condition which needs to be made uh, and after that our favorite arrow function and uh, some uh, different manipulations with the uh, other one and as you can see uh, here one there is one condition and there is uh, the another one. So yeah, we can use it uh, for uh, several on um, the same type when conditions are uh, different. And uh, the next one with the uh, pattern machine, um, we can also uh, like uh, make some underscore unnamed variables that we do not really need. Uh, for example, we just need from the line chart, we just need to an ID, uh, and if we do not need anything uh, with uh, anything else from its um, fields, uh, yes, we just uh, you can use underscore and it will be like unnamed variable. Uh, it is uh, also a preview feature from uh, Java 21, but still it is uh, very useful and very uh, convenient uh, to um, us. Uh, and uh, yeah, so here you can see a little bit uh, more uh, with uh, that um, uh, underscore world and a little bit more like with uh, some uh, string templates uh, examples uh, where we uh, just uh, set some other variables. But variables, as you can see from 60 first line uh, can be like uh, there is uh, no like uh, um, some 
errors in setting the first underscore, we can set underscore where we want. Uh, yeah, and let's switch back to our presentation and move to the um, feature that it's not in the project member Amber, but it is a oh, very and very great feature from featuring from the um, core core library changes. Um, in the Java 21, there have been added um, a lot of great interfaces uh, such as sequence collection, sequence set, and sequence map. So uh, let's just head on straight to the our, to our little example with uh, how it was before uh, Java 21. Uh, so yeah, before Java 21, we just uh, in got the first and the last elements uh, using some of the <laughs> cost efficient, I would say, really cost efficient uh, way of creating stream and finding first. At, and this is, applies only uh, to the first element. Uh, yeah, and there is return to an optional, which a lot of uh, wrapping around it. And also the other approach, which is most widely uh, used, and it is one of the uh, common one before. Uh, it's uh, uh, just to get the first element here by index zero uh, and um, that's all. Uh, and um, with the last is the same story. We just get uh, the element by index and uh, just um, oh, from size we are subtracting one. Uh, so what happened uh, under the hood, how uh, they did uh, manage uh, to uh, create um, to create those maps. So yeah, uh, let's just uh, decompile and uh, see that it is actually our approach that we did <laughs> before, but it is inside the method. So uh, it made really, really uh, good in terms of uh, code readability and um, some of the code like management uh, uh, style. Uh, yeah, and you can see here from the last, it's also uh, our approach uh, that was before. But it is really, sorry, uh, it is really great uh, that we had uh, this like inside the our core. Let's proceed with the other and, and that is it for the project Amber and core libraries. Maybe someone got any question regarding this? Okay, so if no questions, then let's proceed with the another one and it is project Loom. Uh, so yeah, there were a lot of uh, edit in Project Loom and mostly like the headliner of Java 21, uh, it can be said that it is a virtual thread, really uh, lightweight threads uh, with a minimal overhead. But uh, let's look a little bit uh, deeper with the uh, virtual threads. So why we needed a virtual thread? Uh, um, regular Java thread, yeah, platform thread, um, it is, really costly to have, it's around uh, two megabytes uh, of RAM. And uh, when we use uh, it uh, and some of the blocking process uh, happens, uh, our CPU stays idle and uh, our Java thread uh, just waits when it gets in block and can proceed with this work. And so uh, there is a table which shows our uh, CPU utilization. And if we have one thread, uh, then we only use by uh, 0 0.001% of our CPU and uh, so on, as you can see. So to uh, have our CPU fully uh, like, um, work uh, fully working all the time we need to have a lot of the strength and get around all oh, one um, one hundred thousand or uh, one million and uh, here is like a trick if 
a regular thread is around two megabytes, then uh, we need to have two terabytes of RAM just to create thread and um, create thread and uh, be really effective. And uh, here comes uh, the virtual threads. Virtual threads uh, are uh, really light weight threads uh, and um, help us a lot with uh, such uh, thing. We just need to have a lot of less memory to have our CPU uh, fully under control, under uh, full load. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's uh, just uh, move to the ID and uh, look uh, to some of the how it was before. Uh, so before we created a fixed thread pool, yeah, here is a four, but uh, it should be a lot more for our CPU. Uh, and uh, then we just uh, do some our of our tasks, and uh, it. Uh, comes really slow. Uh, let's just um, uh, run it and uh, see uh, the result of running it. Just. Uh, so yeah, and uh, when uh, the threads are running, yeah, as you can see, uh, there is a thread and uh, uh, everyone uh, every you see threads how um, schedule works uh, how schedules uh, work uh, it uh, goes and we have you can see in console um, which method it is using is just a simple method that emulating our uh, fetch data from some distant API it just uh, does uh, thread sleep to emulate this time load and turn some uh, integers uh, so yeah but uh, let's uh, just run uh, our how our virtual thread will work. So just give me a minute and um, as uh, you will see from that, uh, it just uh, moves uh, from uh, different uh, thread workers uh, to another. And uh, how does it uh, work? How this lightweight um, solution of works uh, under the hood. Uh, so let's move uh, back to our presentation. So uh, we have a set of platforms thread. Um, it can be much more, it can be one, uh, but uh, let's just imagine uh, we have uh, one, oh, sorry, 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 mm -hmm. something with my mouse. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's, um, Assume that uh, we have uh, one, uh, for example, one, one. Oh, my mouse is just not doing good. Uh, so yeah, let's um, assume that we have one platform thread here, var one fork. Uh, and uh, how does the platform thread works? Uh, so it is over the platform thread as a virtual thread, uh, and it is like. Um, so when virtual thread gets blocked, it just moves uh, to the heap. And you can see here is block threads. So when it gets blocked, it uh, just moves to the heap and to wait for the process uh, to unblock. And so when the second virtual thread is uh, on the line, uh, is moved, uh, to the this platform thread when the second when the first one is uh, uh, blocked and uh, if the second one is blocked it's also gets moved to the heap but um, as you can see from the image the first one is moved back so for these purposes uh, a lot of uh, Java classes were factored uh, to uh, hold um, to be with the yield uh, method uh, to have such class as continuation as uh, and have this yield. So um, when the thread is uh, just moved to the heap, it uses continuation yield 
and then uh, it goes back and as you uh, can see from our like uh, console output uh, here is you can see that there's only some workers that are loaded with um, virtual threads and they are mode uh, in uh, so let's proceed with the another one but maybe uh, anyone has any question on the virtual threads okay so seems like no questions uh, so let's just move to another uh, egg that hurts us it's uh, unstructured concurrency the structured concurrency approach but we'll uh, look uh, to it from the perspective of uh, unstructured here uh, so uh, in the unstructured uh, approach we just uh, had some different uh, fixed threads uh, and uh, also uh, there is one uh, there was such an approach uh, when we just manage those threads uh, by ourselves and uh, they um, can be like become orphans so there is no uh, fixed uh, structure that uh, can handle our subtask our tasks uh, and so on so for uh, that uh, topic uh, the structured concurrency how helps us so uh, when there is uh, like structured concurrency scope yeah and uh, our service is like subtasks so uh, one two and other uh, subtask and it can have as you can see some nested uh, scopes uh, under it and the uh, nested one uh, will be um, also executed uh, in such manner of structure so there is in like structure inside the structure and uh, let's see how it uh, turns out in code so uh, this example like before when i showed you for the virtual threads uh, it is like um, the example uh, for um, it's valid example for unstructured how we can uh, use it so yeah we just like getting uh, this uh, getting uh, the data and yeah and it is um, leading to some losses in structure what uh, is in the structured concurrency so uh, the main class uh, the principal class that handles all of uh, it uh, it is the structured task scope uh, and um, we just uh, can create it with using the a scope um, a variable yeah, creating uh, using try with resource and uh, there is a method forks um, join and throw if fails to help us maintain the structure uh, we just um, prevent uh, using this method why it uh, has uh, so much benefit we prevent some memory losses uh, we prevent some uh, other uh, type of uh, memory leaks, some scope issues when a variable uh, is not found or some uh, interrupted exception and so uh, we just uh, using this approach yeah and uh, like if we submitting to executor services before we just creating uh, forks and uh, gen then we join them and have the uh, this type uh, so uh, yeah, uh, let's uh, just move back to some uh, <clears throat> our virtual threads uh, and yeah, because I have forgot uh, one um, specific uh, thing <laughs> uh, so yeah, one specific thing about virtual threads they are really, they are more expensive to run than the platform threads so, uh, but they are less less significant less uh, costly to um, run to block so uh, how does it uh, happens uh, a virtual thread is just like as we saw from this explanation it just 
a platform thread with uh, an overhead that makes this uh, thread uh, virtual and uh, helps us to move it in heap and back on mount on thread. Uh, so uh, as uh, it's as if it uh, said that is uh, much expand that is not much but it is expensive and uh, virtual thread can show poor performance on the uh, threads um, on uh, at the kernel threads um, compared to kernel threads um, uh, and uh, so uh, when do shall we use this virtual threads uh, we shall use virtual threads uh, when we have some blocking operation for example uh, we request um, and um, we make a request uh, to the uh, some server, some database, and so on, where we have could have the benefit from blocking when our thread can be remounted again. And uh, uh, if we have internal like CPU computations that um, have uh, does not have blocking, uh, we won't just benefit from uh, such logic because there is no blockage and uh, there is no to uh, expand uh, our precious resources uh, on it. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I had the other slide, but uh, it had been lost some uh, saved issue. Um, some saving issues so uh, the uh, frameworks uh, today we have uh, plenty of frameworks and one of the most uh, popular uh, to support uh, the uh, java 21 it is quarkus micronaut and uh, our widely used uh, spring and it provides uh, some of the great uh, configurations uh, to our to use it's like the greatest feature, I would say, uh, it's virtual threads. So it can drastically improve uh, the performance on it. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think uh, it is um, it uh, from my side for today. So yeah, uh, does anyone have some questions? Um, maybe 